let's stick in the stock market. Let's talk about capital raises. Our next guest has been involved for an up and coming iron ore producer. Tell us about the environment in general as well. Let's have a chat to Trent Primer from Barclays. Hi Trent, welcome back to the program. Still plenty of money looking for a good deal. So how the capital raise business going? For sure. Um, look, after a, a pretty bumper year with um, with the market obviously tracking higher, I think coming out of COVID, we've seen a lot of companies, a lot of corporate clients wanting to, to uh, essentially take the ball and run with it and close off uh, some of their listings prior to end of year. I think the, uh, the ASX currently is tracking about one listing per day. We'd expect to see a bit of momentum and obviously a pickup in in, in listings um, in the last three three months of the year. So uh, it's been very busy here. Um, yeah, we've we've obviously come out of a, a hot reporting season. The market started to cool off a little bit and take a breather. Um, we've noticed a lot of clients and, and, and high net worth and retail investors alike uh, with with some risk positive sort of demand for ECM deals on market placements that offer discounts to last closers and, and obviously free air touching options is, is a big thing in this market. So a lot of people looking for bargains and a lot of people looking for, um, for some of those risk on uh, ECM deals. Well, as we know, we're racing into Christmas. Dare I be the first person to mention Christmas here on Ausbiz. We can still expect cash yielding nothing for quite some time. So this activity really should spill into next year as well. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think the, the overall market at the moment is seeing jitters because inflation expectations are rising. I think in the US, it's risen uh, the 10th month in a row. So we're seeing a sell off in some of the more overpriced tech sector uh, companies, a lot of money rotating out of some of those growth names and uh, are moving into some, well, some, some pretty healthy uh, discounted pre IPO uh, placements, which we have currently. We've actually noticed quite a pickup with um, with some of our businesses listing on overseas exchanges, one in the renewable energy space, and like you mentioned before, one in the uh, resources space, uh, iron ore. So what's ticking along there in the iron ore space? I mean, it's a little on the nose when it was yielding $230. Is it still a good outlook? Look, I think so. Obviously, the China thematic is... Uh, is on everyone's lips at the moment. Um, iron ore is settling down to, to, I think, 123 overnight. We expect it to probably find a bit of comfort around the 130 level. We were earlier expecting around 150 US per tonne, but uh, with, with the current jitters in commodity pricing, geopolitical tensions obviously not making it much easier. Uh, we'd expect a bit of whip soaring in the iron ore price, but we're, we're comfortable to. Uh, to accumulate on weakness as we always have. Some of your larger uh, miners like BHP, Rio, Fortescue, are extremely profitable even with iron ore price coming off. Um, more so in the in the, the ECM space, uh, our own uh, Kosh Metals, which is looking to list on the London Stock Exchange. Uh, I think there's you know some big upside for investors there considering that they're moving towards a new term uh, production sorry, target um, as opposed to being you know, an explorer. So I think there's plenty of upside for some of the junior and mid-tier miners uh, and more than comfortable holding some, some larger final miners like uh, BHP, Rio, Fortescue and Staples for the portfolio. So as you say, there's a lot of cashed up high net worth, for example. Are they looking at resources or they're just looking for anywhere where there's a decent return on a two to three year basis? I think it depends on the sector. Um, resources has been hot throughout the year and, and it's probably tapered off a little bit towards the, the third, fourth quarter of this year, though we're still seeing quite a bit of demand there. Um, renewable energy is probably the biggest. that We're seeing some sustained uh, demand from investors, um, a considerable, considerable amount actually. And I suppose the burning question for each investor is, Will Australia become a global superpower in the, the export of renewable energy? I mean, we obviously think so. We've we faced such a high demand from from our clients uh, in the renewable energy space. We've we've had to concentrate uh, a, a lot of uh, resources, both internally and externally, on you know providing upcoming uh, upcoming uh, client webinars, 
um, meetings with board members in particular and, and obviously keeping the, the overall market abreast with what we're doing in that space. It just seems to be a very hot topic at the moment. Um, we, we've got a couple which we put away this year, Vedan Earth Technologies, which will be listing on the NASDAQ uh, and a current one with Sweetman Renewable um, at, the, at the moment, which we're going to tie out very soon, but still uh, a, a very hefty amount of demand, particularly in, in those sectors. What about right at the very beginning, the seed capital stage? How is that going? Understandably, no one knows what's going to happen over the next sort of six to 12 months in the market. And I think that's why you're getting such a such a rush for companies to list prior to the end of this year, because they know that they're listing in a hot market. There's an exit strategy there. Um, there's liquidity provided for investors if they do want to sort of, you know, free up their investment and, and turn to cash prior to Christmas. I think uh, more so, you know, <laughs> A lot of the early stage investment opportunities like your, your seed opportunities, I've seen a, a lot of demand taper off um, on, on a ground level here at the company. We, we haven't aimed to, uh, to take on much more in terms of pre-IPO, uh, definitely not taking any seed investment opportunities at the moment or presenting those to clients, uh, mainly because you know if the market does turn next year, well, there goes your exit strategy, there goes your liquidity event for investors looking to get out, and that could be a long-term hold. I think that the market realistically uh, should call off. There should be a little bit of repricing in some sectors. Uh, so we're just, we're just taking our time with, with um, the companies that we currently uh, have at the moment, making sure that we're, we're dotting our I's, crossing our T's, getting these guys to listing this year in a hot market. Um, beyond that, you know, I, probably a, a conversation for another day, uh, you know, early next year. We'll, we'll have an eye, idea of, um, of where the market's heading. But at this point, we're just we're, we're taking the ball and running with the, the current market that we have. And we're doing well while we're doing it. Unfortunately, that, that translates to return for investors. So, you know, we couldn't be happier. It's going to be a good Christmas for, for a lot of our investors and, and um, a lot of us. So we're, we're quite uh, we're quite fortunate. Yeah, well, good to hear. We'd like to hear people making money, investors as well as yourselves. Thank you so much, Trent, for popping in. Cheers. Thank you for having me.